Now at one breaking news, the mountain fire that has burned several homes in Ventura County has exploded in size to nearly 20,000 acres. Good afternoon. This is the KTLA 5 News at 1. I'm Glenn Walker. And I'm Lou Parker. Fire crews are working to protect life and more properties from burning as the winds quickly fan the flames. We have live team coverage this afternoon tracking the current weather conditions, new evacuations and power <laughs> outages. We're going to start with Sarah Welch. She's live in Santa Paula where properties are still being threatened by the flames. Sarah. Hi, Lou and Glenn. Good afternoon. Yeah, properties are still being threatened and many properties have burned down. We don't have a, an accurate number yet. We are waiting on that, but I want to show you this. Uh, this is one of those properties here in Santa Paula. This is just a beautiful property. It's off South Mountain Road. You can see all that's left here is the chimney. Now, the owner told us that she was really worried about the winds yesterday. And you can see as we pan right the hillside here how it's just charred and as we pan all the way around you can see that you know her garden area this whole place that was set up uh, to be her special place has burned to the ground now this woman she woke up yesterday worried about the wind she decided to check on her daughters nearby she left the property she wasn't gone long she came back to her house burning down and she had to grab what she could uh, Don DeLeon come on in uh, we want to talk to you um, Thank you so much. Thank um, you. And you're here with um, with one of your pets. This is Polar. Polar. Polar, <laughs> polar bear. The polar bear. Uh, walk us through what happened so quickly yesterday. It was just very scary. The wind was about 60, 70 miles an hour. It was. It just all happened so fast. And this started on Balcom Canyon, and within minutes, it, or I don't know how long, but it got here so fast. Um, I left here. Went to a house uh, half a mile down the road, said, oh, I forgot my phone, came back, and the house was on fire and couldn't get up here again. Let's walk over to your vehicle. So you were able to quickly pack the vehicle, and inside your vehicle are some of your most prized possessions. Yes. Lou and Glenn, yes. take a look at what's inside, what's packed inside this car. We've got six dogs and two cats, all packed in here uh, with a friend. Um, they've been in here in and out for the night and uh don you're working on a place to go right and uh first have to find babysitters for these guys and then process what to do next um oh, it's just such a beautiful place though um it's you know it's this material but the house had just turned 100 years old and it, it saw through the depression. It, I believe it was a speakeasy in the 20s because it had a bar built in the 20s. So um, really it special had place. A fun history. It was used uh, for weddings. Um, so there's a lot of dancing that happened in the house. It was a very happy place. Um, a little haunted, but very happily. <laughs> and um, I'm going to miss it so much. The windows were beautiful and it was just falling apart, 100 years old, falling apart. But um, still it had so much character. But you have your pets. Yes, have the pets. And now I'm interested in seeing what happened before here because I believe there may have been a church here before the house was built in the early 20s. So we'll see what pops up under those foundations. Don, we wish you the best, and we send our blessings and our prayers, and thank you. And, you know, for anyone that has pets, um, even large animals, we know that you can take them over to uh, the Ventura County Fairgrounds, and I think there are a couple other, other spots as well. And, you know, when we look around at this gorgeous property, Lou and Glenn, um, right now uh, Ventura County doesn't have a count on the number of homes that have been destroyed. Um, they did say that they've got about uh, a team of 10 or so uh, damage assess assessors going out, um, going house by house to figure out exactly um, what those numbers are. And we know that it's going to be quite a large number. Now, along South Mountain Road, that's um, one of the focal points today of this fire because the fire is burning along this ridge. And we've seen several fire engines out here today. Um, they've been working to beat back the fire so it doesn't cross South Mountain Road. And we did speak to um, a fire captain earlier. Here's what he told us. 
Uh, right now, the biggest challenge is the uh, continuing northeast winds coming down the Santa Clara Valley um, and affecting our firefight. So our mission right now and for today is to keep the fire south of South Mountain Road, uh, continuing to, to mop up and where the fire meets the road. And we're, we've been in, uh, actively engaged in a firefight um, this morning and continue that this, uh, in this afternoon. So again, back here live, you can see all these beautiful animals and you can only imagine, you know, the stress level of these pets that are displaced and wondering what is going on. They've lost their homes too. And uh, everybody here seems to be working together to try to figure out solutions. And uh, I think you said too, Don, it's been wonderful to see the community coming together. Yes, and the firemen are doing an amazing job. They. They had two. Wait, they had a helicopter and two fire engines on this house. Still couldn't save it, but still they tried. Yeah. So got to hand it to them. They're doing amazing. Thank you, Don. Yeah, the firefighters. Uh, they are doing amazing work. Um, kudos to all of you out there. And uh, right now, Lou and Glenn. Um, the cause of this fire is still under investigation and the firefight continues. I think one of the biggest blessings today will be when these winds begin to die down. We'll send it back to you. All right. Thank you, Sarah. And as her guest just said, heartbreak and devastation in Ventura County as homeowners return to their family home and find it destroyed. Multiple homes were burned to the ground by the fast moving mountain fire that sparked yesterday morning. KTLA 5's Kimberly Chang is live in Camarillo Heights and uh, spoke to those homeowners who are now sifting through the rubble. And Kimberly, you were out and about yesterday all day. You've seen it all. Lou and Glenn, and this is just a devastating scene as we're meeting homeowner after homeowner who has lost their home. You saw in the last hour we talked to the owners of what was their home that they built 25 years ago, Fawn Parrish and her husband Joey. You can see them over there, uh, her over there with her son just going through what's left of their home. Earlier, they told us that they were looking for a box, which had some important documents that they weren't able to take with them. But in this last hour, there's no sign of it. So it's likely gone. Um, you can see just what's left of their home. They were, they were pointing out things like the spiral staircase that they put in and was beautiful. This home was beautiful, had beautiful views. Uh, Fawn was telling me that her grandfather owned this lot, her dad lived here, and then she and her husband Joey built this house from the ground up. It meant a lot to them. They had thousands of people who had been staying here, including international students that they hosted. They would, would hold annual dessert night for the neighbors. It was a gathering place. It was a place of love, she was telling me. Um, this is the address here, 540 Highland Drive. And they're still walking around now assessing the damage for the first time since they evacuated yesterday. But I want to take you on a walk here of the neighborhood. You can see the house next door also destroyed and several homes in this neighborhood. You'll see the same thing, just ashes, smoke, some hot spots. And basically you can't even make out the house over here. You can just see a, a brick fireplace, what once was. Now I do want to point out to the left here, there, there is a home that's still standing. Uh, we spoke with those neighbors earlier. They also evacuated yesterday. They were describing to me when they left this area yesterday, the smoke was coming in. Uh, people said it was hot. They could just feel the flames and they knew they had to go. Many people grabbed their dogs and just got out of here because the roads were packed. So they wanted to just get out as fast as they could. Some people with the clothes on their back, they weren't able to grab those photos, those those sentimental possessions um, that mean so much. A lot of people uh, didn't even have time to grab a toothbrush. One of the neighbors said, you know, they tell you have a go bag, be prepared. But when that moment happens, it's just different. You're, you're not even thinking clearly. And for these residents in this Camarillo Heights neighborhood, it came down to just a few minutes. And literally some people only have the clothes off their back. And actually Fawn was just telling me that she and her husband stopped by Walmart this morning to get some clothes. Now I can tell you that this is a tight knit community in this neighborhood. We saw the neighbors come over and just hug, give them an embrace, a hug. And they offered to just bring them some clothing um, right now. So they're, they're in the middle of doing that. Uh, let's take a listen to part of that interview with Fawn Parrish. I, you know what? I'm a writer. Yeah, I've written I'm, 10 books. Why, we don't have words. I've triaged everything, and this is to the point where 
I'll figure out what that triage meant. Yeah. You know, yeah. I, I, I just now seeing it. I, I seen you before I seen it. I'm so sorry. So I, yeah. I haven't had a chance to go look at anything <laughs> yet, so I yeah. can't can can't process it. <laughs> sure. Okay, back here live, you're looking at this house that is still standing. It was not damaged. Uh, we spoke with Sean Simon earlier and uh, and her husband, and you can see her there. That's what she grabbed when she left, the, the dogs. She wanted to get out of here safely, and when they return today, they're walking through for the first time and seeing that the house is still standing. But around her, there's several homes. I mean, look back there. You can see a home destroyed. Her, her neighbor, who she loves so much, Fawn, her home destroyed. And they just named neighbor after neighbor, their homes destroyed. So she talked to me about feeling survivor's guilt. Listen. I feel, yeah, um, what, what do you call that? What, uh, survivor's guilt, you know, in a way? Yeah. There's some of that, yeah. It's just, why ours? I don't know. I'm grateful. I love my house and I love living here. And But I don't know. I don't know why. And it's just been, just been devastating. Just been devastating. And back here live, you can see firefighters hard at work here um, in the neighborhood, putting out hot spots for the homes that are still standing. We have seen them spraying the area down to protect those structures. But again, we don't know how many homes were destroyed here, but just from talking to resident after resident, um, they're devastated. Just a lot of their neighbors, friends, uh, they've lost a home or someone they know has lost a home.